Because you're playing uh, Dan Evans. Yeah. What do you remember from that 2016 match that sent the call? <coughs> what do you recall of that occasion? Well, uh, to be honest, I remember playing well. And uh, I remember the match more when I played against him at the Hopman Cup a couple of years ago. Because it was my, I think it was my first match back after the knee issue. So that was my first match. Um, so clearly that was in some ways memorable. Um, it was our first or second match, I don't remember. But it was a, it was a good match. I, I like the way he plays, you know. He's got all the shots and um, likes to take chances, takes the ball early. So it's nice to see him back on the tour as well. And uh, I'm happy for him that he won his first round. How are you feeling tonight out there? Pretty routine win. Cool. I think I was hitting the ball really well. So, uh, um, yeah, look, uh, I think I protected my serve well. Um, didn't allow Dennis really to get into into my service games very often. Um, you know, I was always in the lead as well, so obviously that helps. Uh, I can free swing maybe a little bit more, but at the same time, I think, uh, you know, I had to do some defense, some some offense. It was a bit of everything, but I'm very happy with uh, with my first round. To be honest, it's been it's been great. I felt the ball really good. Roger, if you had to narrow it down and say, oh, I don't know, one or two things that you really appreciate about Andy, what what would you say? How would you answer that? What I appreciate about Andy. Um, yeah, I mean, first thing that comes to to mind, it's somebody that uh, you know will try everything on the court, you know, to to beat you, and I appreciate that, you know, because uh, um, within the rules and with whatever he does, you know, with his fighting spirit, with his tactics, with slicing, you know, defense or attacking play or even serving volley or chip and charge, whatever it is, he'll do it all, you know, and he'll leave everything out there, and I feel there's no regrets for him. Um, after losing a game, um, and I like that about him because I can't stand it when guys go into the match and are just content of, you know, I do my thing and if it doesn't work, well, so be it. And he's not like that. And um, yeah, he's one of the great retrievers we had in our sport, and he's a big guy, you know, to do that. So he, he's more from the modern generation with Novak together, two guys that move um, like smaller guys. And uh, yeah. The carrying the weight of Britain on his shoulders, you know, for British tennis, that was not easy for him. And I think you could see that it wasn't always uh, simple at times for him. And I think uh, at the end, uh, all of us, also the players, were extremely happy that he did that, end up winning Wimbledon and Davis Cup and Olympic gold and all these things, even though Olympic gold went through me, you know. But uh, um, I don't know. I. He had to really fight for it and earn earn it. Like world number one, he gave it all he had. After Novak's incredible start to the season, he had a, a sick finish. You know, so um, there's a lot to admire about Andy how he went about it. Um, Rafa earlier kind of expressed his concern that, that the guys on the players' council hadn't gone to him to kind of get his opinion on the, the kind of changing of Chris Kamod. Do you think there's a bit of a worry that it's a little bit insular, the players' council at the minute? They're not maybe going out and hearing points of view from the rest of the tour, particularly experienced guys like you and Rafa, because you were saying you didn't, you hadn't really heard much about it either. Well, I mean, I I knew about it. and I really tried to be interested, you know, to be quite, quite honest, because if I want to voice my opinion, I need to know. Uh, so I care, um, but it's it's hard, you know, especially through the off season to stay in touch with everybody. And the problem with Rafa as well, he's been away a little bit, you know, through through injury at the at the end of the year. So all of a sudden you realize, well, Rafa was not around that much, you know, as well. So somebody has to call him and, you know, for somebody to call Rafa, it's always a bit like, oh, I don't want to bother the guy, you know. So I think it's tricky, but somebody needs to reach out to him, no doubt about it. Um, for that, we have player representatives. Um, look, uh, now whatever happened happened, but I anyway wanted to speak to Novak a little bit about the whole situation, and I, I also definitely want to speak to Rafa now that he's back on tour and we're here and we're playing the same day. So I would like to meet him on an off day and just get his take now that he actually voiced his opinion about uh, 
um, about the tour and it's nice to see that he cares regardless if it's positive or negative I think it's always good when top guys care and I know he's one of those guys I was on the council with him and I get along with Rafa really well and uh, so I do also with Novak so I just want to get the take and see uh, how we can move uh, the sport into the right direction moving forward you know and that not there is any miscommunication and um, groups being built you know in some shape or form I don't know what exactly has been going on uh, in that regard but look it's a big decision making time right now and I think it's uh, important that maybe also Rafa Novak and me we get together yeah uh, Roger I don't think you faced the break point today is your serve at career best yeah, I mean, I think it's going very well. Um, I think I can trust my second serve in particular. And when you trust your second serve, you can go after your first serve. Uh, have good variation, to be quite honest. Um, this court plays slightly different to to the Hopman Cup, and at the Hopman Cup also, I served really well. So I think I'm very, I can be very happy how um, I got out of the blocks uh, from the off season, um, because I think that's always the the most tricky part. Is like how do you uh, get through your service games, you know, time and time again? Um, because if you don't go, don't get broken much, um, or hardly ever, or not at all. Well, you have so little pressure on the return game, so you can really try out different things. And I think uh, I started to feel that midway, th you know, through the first set already, that it was going to be difficult for for Dennis to to get in my service game. So that relaxes you from the baseline, and then you know, good things really happen. On one of the the rare occasions your serve was challenged, your serve volleyed. Are you comfortable doing that on these courts? Um, yes, I mean, I played a lot of serve and volley against Zverev basically the whole match in, at the Hopman Cup. So uh, I feel like I'm bowling really well. I feel really comfortable at net. Uh, and I think also mixed doubles, to be quite honest, helped me because I served, mixed, uh, served and volley in the mixed doubles all the time and I spent a lot of time at net. But I've been feeling good at the net for quite some time now. And I think the transition uh, with the sprints and stuff, I feel really good about it. Uh, my body's in good shape, and uh, I think it always depends on who you're playing a little bit, uh, depending on how they return as well. Um, it's better or, or not to serve volley against certain players. Today, I didn't feel really the, the super urge to do it, and also um, the way Dennis returns when he does connect, uh, it is dangerous, you know, maybe when you serve volley. So I only did it in selective times, but um, look, uh, we'll see who I play and if it can be of good use, but I'm happy I, I have it in the bag.